Okay, so for the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be creating this material on a sphere. I'll just go out of my camera. I've got three area lights in the scene. Lighting is extremely important whenever you're creating materials. But if you check the description or the top comment, you can go ahead and download the studio setup so that you can follow along without any issues. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to start by going to Create, Shader, Cinema 40 Octane, Octane Material, drag and drop that onto my sphere. I want to make sure I'm going to my plugins and I want to open up the Live Viewer as well and just send the scene over to the Live Viewer so we can see everything that's happening here. Then double click on the Octane Material and open up the Node Editor. Alright, so it's time to create our diffuse texture and if you look on the left hand side, we just want to pay attention to everything that's green. These are all called generators and generators will ge generate different patterns and effects for your material. So we're going to be using the noise generator and I'm going to connect this to my diffuse and if we pay attention to our live viewer, you can see that this noise is basically present on our sphere. So we can see some uh, difference in the coloration on our sphere over here or just a different gradient. Now if I go ahead and select noise, you'll see that we have four noise types. We'll be using the Perlin noise. And then I've got some predetermined values that I want to use over here. So the Omega de uh, basically determines how detailed the generated, pattern, the generated pattern is. And for the Omega, I'm going to put this on 0 0.64532. So that's going to increase some of the detail of the generated pattern. And then the Gamma basically determines how much of that pattern is visible or hidden. So my gamma is going to be on a value of 1.191 and then your contrast over here also think about it like you're basically clamping these values to make the separation between those values a lot more intense. So my contrast is going to be on 0 0.299 I'm also going to be putting my octaves value on 6. So the octaves and the omega work in conjunction with each other just to increase the overall detail of the generated pattern. So I'm going to put my octaves on 6. And while this menu is still open, I'm going to click on UVW Transform. That automatically creates a transform node for me. So the scale on the XYZ, I want to make sure this is selected so that it does a uniform scale. And I'm just going to decrease this value a little bit. So I'm going to put my value on 0 0.955 and press enter. And it places that same value on the X, Y and the Z. Now it's time to start adding some color onto our material. And a really fantastic way of doing that is to use a mapping node. So these maroon colored icons over here are all called mapping nodes and we'll be using a gradient node. So just drag and drop that over here. You'll see this line turns orange. As soon as I let go, it automatically connects my noise to the gradient and my gradient to the diffuse. So if I go ahead and select the diffuse, uh, sorry, if I go ahead and select the gradient, you can see that I can start adding some additional colors over here. So if I just left click over here, it's automatically going to add another color picker. And if I just click and drag this down, it removes that color picker for me. So to get the overall look and feel of that skin material, I would highly recommend that you guys use the exact same values that I'm using over here. But obviously you can be a little bit experimental and use your own colors. But if you want it to really look like this disgusting skin, then you'll need to use the exact same values that I'll be using. So I'm going to start by just left clicking here and, create another, and creating another color picker. And I'm just going to clamp this a little bit closer. So this first material over here, you can already see with these separations in the gradients, what colors are going to be applied onto which regions. So I'm going to be starting with this one. And the values over here, I'm, I'm using the HSV slider on H. I'm going to put this on 13. S is on 60. And V is on 83. So this creates a nice skin, skin tone. Then this middle value is going to be my H is on 8. My S is on 81. And my V is on 40. Okay, so that's going to control some of the veiny, veiny regions on the material. You'll see later on when we actually apply uh, displacement. And then our last color pick over here, our H is going to be on 8, our S on 57, and our V will remain on 100. So there we go. So this is going to be my final uh, colorization for our disgusting skin material. And if you haven't already, just make sure that you clamp these color pickers a little bit closer to each other. So just try and match it to the position where mine is located. You can see it makes a big difference if these are separated from each other. So I found that this location for this type of material uh, worked out pretty well for me. And there we go. 
All right, so now we'll be using another generator called Marble. So just drag and drop that onto your shader tree. Let's go ahead and select our Octane material, go to Basic and change the material type to Glossy so that we actually have access to Specular and we can use the Specular and Roughness in conjunction with each other to create a variation in the overall wetness of this material. So some areas are going to be dry, some are going to be moist and it's just going to make this material look a little bit more disgusting. Now let's go ahead and connect this to the roughness. Okay, so you can already see that it's applied some universal uh, roughness onto our material, referencing this marble uh, generated pattern. So I want to also make sure I'm selecting the marble and I'm going to be putting in some predetermined values. So on the offset, I'm going to put this on 0 0.72 and my omega is going to be on 0 0.35122. My variance is going to be on 1 and I'm going to increase those octaves to introduce some more detail on this marble. So I'm going to put my octaves on 10. Okay, so you can already see uh, what's happening over here with some of the roughness and the specular, but it's going to look a lot better once displacement is applied. You'll see that some regions are going to have a lot more moisture, wetness to it uh, than other regions. Okay, so if I want better control over which regions are going to be wet and which regions are going to be dry, I'm going to be using the gradient mapping node. So just drag and drop that out here. Now I want to connect this marble to the texture on the gradient. And then this is going to be connected to the specular. So just the gradient mapping node that's connected to the marble is going to be controlling the specular value. And I'll be able to control the moisture just with this gradient slider. But I'm going to invert this. So I'll bring the white value on the opposite side. Okay, and this will this will be a lot more visible once the displacement is applied, but I'm just inverting this for now. And there we go. So we've got the single marble, just the default uh, version of this marble is in the roughness, and then the marble with the gradient is connected to the specular so that we have better control over the wetness and dryness of this material. So to really add a lot more detail onto this material, besides using the displacement, I want to add a secondary layer of detail on here using the bump section. So we're going to be basically creating another generator. So we're going, we're going to uh, drag out the noise generator. And I want to combine both the marble and the noise to drive the bump detail. So to do that, we just need to use another mapping node, which is called mix. So this creates a mixed texture. So now I can go ahead and grab my marble. I'll put that into texture slot one and this noise into texture slot two. Now, if I select the mixed texture, I can choose the exact uh, amount to determine how much of this blends together. By default, it's on a 50% blend, uh, which is a pretty good value to start off with. Uh, but this is a great way to combine generators or materials together with one single node. So it's the mixed texture. Now I'm going to go ahead and connect that onto the bump. And you can already see what's happening onto the surface of our material over here. It's adding some additional or a really nice layer of detail on top of this material, which is going to make our disgusting skin look a lot more realistic and just a lot more uh, puke inducing as well. <laughs> now I've got some predetermined values for this noise that we just created. So go ahead and select it. I'm going to leave my type on Perlin. I'm going to increase those octaves to 8. Put my omega on 0 0.684. And then by the gamma, I'm going to put this on 0 0.537. And my contrast on 0 0.04. Okay, so this secondary noise is basically like if we if you really look closely over here, it's almost like adding a poor level of detail onto the skin. So it's quite subtle, but it definitely adds a little bit more realism onto a skin material. So now the great thing is I can go to my mixed texture and I can choose how much of either the marble or this additional layer of skin detail I want to blend. So for the value over here, I used an amount of 0 0.455. And there we go. Okay. Okay, so we're basically done with setting up the material, but I want to push this a lot further. Let's add some displacement onto this material. Now I want to make sure that my displacement is being driven by the same values that I have on this marble node. So just go ahead and select the marble, hold on control and just click and drag to duplicate that. 
Okay, and there we go. So we've got this ready for our displacement. But you'll notice if I just drag and drop this into displacement, I basically can't connect this to the displacement and that's because we need two more nodes. So the first node is going to be the displacement node. So connect that to displacement and then scroll up here and we need a baking texture. So without the baking texture node, the displacement won't be visible on our material. So drag and drop that, connect this to the displacement and then connect the marble to texture. And you'll, you'll see, there we go. So now we've got some displacement visible on our material, but you'll notice the quality of the displacement looks really bad right now. And that's because we need to select our displacement node. And over here by level of detail, by default it's on 256 for the sake of performance so that you can still navigate around your scene and so that it doesn't melt your PC. But if we go ahead and increase that level of detail, let's say to 2K, You'll see that this starts to look a lot better and this material is also looking a lot more disgusting. Okay and I'm going to just decrease the height of my displacement over here. I'm going to put mine on 4.8. I don't want that to be that high. There we go that looks a little bit better in my opinion and now you can see all of this glossiness on the skin and that's been controlled by this gradient sorry by this gradient value over here. You can see if I invert this now the top section of the skin becomes really dry, but I noticed that an inverted uh, gradient value like this gave me some control over these specular highlights over here and it just makes the skin look a little bit more disgusting. Just the fact that it's got these wet regions on it and dry regions creates some really nice variation. Uh, but there we go, you guys have created a disgusting skin material that is 100% procedural that you can come back and edit and do whatever you want to it to continue editing this monstrosity. Okay, so that's the end of the tutorial, guys. Now you know how to create this material. Remember, with a procedural material, you can always go back and adjust anything. If you want to, maybe you want to change the color of the veins. So you just change this color picker. Maybe you want some blue veins on your material over here. And now it looks like some infected type of disgusting skin. And <laughs> this is what I love about procedural materials. You can always just go back and edit them and experiment. Maybe try different noise types as well. But now you know how to set this up. I hope you got a basic understanding of the nodes as well. And you can see just how powerful the node editor is. All right. So anyway, stay tuned for some more videos and tutorials. I truly appreciate the support on this channel and goodbye.